There's new reporting on Fire Virgin Islands Attorney General Denise George, who was investigating Jeffrey Epstein-related cases until last December, when she was let go days after suing J.P. Morgan Chase about alleged Epstein abuse. New filings show that in 2019, Virgin Islands Governor Albert Bryan lobbied George to issue a special waiver to the territory's sex offender law so that Jeffrey Epstein could travel freely. Regarding the request, George said, just the fact that he as a sex offender got the governor to come to me for that request, unusual. Now, according to reporting from investigative journalist Lee Fong, in the filings, George said, because not every sexual offender or any person, you know, are in the position to have the governor make the request to the attorney general rather than just coming and making it on their own directly to the attorney general, that by itself indicated to me that he was flexing his political influence over or with the governor in an effort to get a favorable result. Now, George ultimately denied the waiver. Investigative journalist Lee Fong joins us now to discuss his reporting on this matter. Nice to see you, Lee. Hey, good to see you. Yeah, we are fascinated, Brianna and I, by this situation, this um, island where Jeffrey Epstein seemed to have access to all levels of political um, influence. Uh, tell us more about you know, what his goal would have been here with the, 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 so he would be not on the registry or have less restrictions on how he could travel? Yeah, that's right. You know, here uh, in the mainland U.S., we kind of, the press has tended to focus on Epstein's high-level connections to famous bankers and politicians, um, other, other elites, academics. Uh, but, you know, there's another side to this Epstein scandal that is entirely focused on his uh, influence within the Virgin Islands. You know, after uh, his conviction for child prostitution charges in 2008, in Florida. Uh, Epstein moved his parole to the Virgin Islands. He really kind of focused his political influence in the Virgin Islands, perhaps because he believed he could more easily manipulate the process in this very small territory. He donated uh, large amounts to various political figures. He really kind of bought huge amounts of political power within the upper echelons of the Virgin Islands government. And, you know, uh, this story is, it's, I think, it very interesting because, you know, as we've had this ongoing litigation between the Virgin Islands and J.P. Morgan, we just see uh, disclosure after disclosure showing Epstein's uh, control over the top kind of uh, political power brokers on the islands. So um, the, the latest uh, legal filings posted this month or this week, excuse me, uh, show that Epstein really had a direct line in shaping even the law, the sex offender law that was passed in the Virgin Islands in 2012, as the Virgin Islands was updating its sex offender law to comply with federal standards in terms of uh, notifying other states when he when sex offenders uh, were traveling, um, placing some restrictions on travel, uh, other disclosure requirements. Uh, Jeffrey Epstein uh, had his lawyers and lobbyists actually draft amendments to that law uh, create an exemption to that law that, that was wholly written by by his team, uh, had them uh, move those amendments to the legislature, to the governor, and had them word for word, uh, some of these, these proposed changes uh, inserted into the law. And what did those changes do? Well, one of the main changes were uh, giving the power to the attorney general of the Virgin Islands to issue a special waiver, uh, allowing, uh, you know, waiving of a 21 day notification period, uh, making it so you did not have to notify officials of travel in person. You could just do it over email, um, really allowing Epstein to just come and go as he pleased, uh, uh, you know, unlike sex, sex offenders in other states. And Epstein was able to win uh, these changes to the law and then use his political influence uh, with the governor's office in, in the Virgin Islands. The governor appoints the attorney general. And we had uh, you know, attorney general after attorney general granting these huge waivers, you know, allowing basically Epstein to do basically whatever he wanted. Um, that finally changed in 2019 uh, when a new attorney general came into the office, Denise George. Uh, she refused the waiver. Uh, and, and as we see in this new disclosure filed this week, uh, she pushed back. She was uh, upset when, when she was demanded, when she was asked to issue the waiver, she fought back against the governor. She, she saw it as an improper uh, level of influence from Epstein over the governor. She later fought with Epstein's lawyers. Uh, she she uh, re refused to issue it. A, a few months after that, uh, Epstein was arrested and then 
uh, put into the jail cell in, in which he died in, in 2019. Yeah, and I, I just I do want to be clear because I, I know from doing you know some reporting on uh, teen school education issues that the sex offender list is extremely restricted. You know, some people we we always imagined it's all Jeffrey Epstein type people on it, and I'm sure there are plenty of those. You know, there are also. 16-year-old and a 17-year-old um, did something inappropriate, and the 17-year-old's on the list, or like urinating in public or something like that, or even people who committed serious crimes and then, you know, served years and years in prison and then are released and have a lot of restrictions on their movement. A lot of those people end up homeless because there's like literally nowhere they're zoned to be able to live because of the registry. So I think there are some issues, in, in my view, there are some serious civil liberties concerns with these registries in general, but it's um, it's amazing. It's a scandal that like the one person who can get out of that is, is the one who committed the most vicious and heinous of all the sexual crimes over and over again. No, I, I agree with Robbie. There are issues with the law. But here is a tier one sex offender, someone who was uh, convicted of child prostitution charges, uh, who had, this is also an equal justice, you know, uh, access to the law issue. Here's someone who actually could rewrite the laws through his own, through his own checkbook, uh, buying off legislators, you know, uh, even doing the kind of the old school Tammany Hall thing. Uh, the, the records show that Epstein would buy turkeys for uh, the local legislators to give out. Uh, he would he would ask the governor, you know, which charities do you want me to donate to? I'll give it to the, you know, the little league team, the the volleyball team, you know, what have you. Uh, giving it to schools, you know, just cutting checks to super PACs, giving the twenty five thousand dollars here and there to inauguration parties, uh, putting the uh, governor's uh, wife, uh, De, the former governor De Young, on his payroll to be his personal lobbyist, and then paying the tuition for the governor's uh, uh, children to to go to school. I mean, his level of influence was vast, uh, spending hundreds of thousands of dollars per year on this type of thing. And he was able to win uh, very specific changes in Virgin Islands policy, uh, one on um, some of these uh, tax benefits that he won for his company, but also in terms of literally changing the sex offender law for himself. So Denise George seems to be an outlier here in the Virgin Islands as someone who was willing to go after Epstein, who rejected the cha these changes to the law that he had advocated for and, frankly, written, um, who had recently secured a $105 million settlement from the estate of Jeffrey Epstein um, last year when she was then suddenly terminated, I think, around January or the very, maybe the very end of last year. At the time, my understanding is that her office basically offered no comment as to the, the circumstances of her being terminated. Do we know anything more about that and how much evidence there is in this, what, that this was any kind of um, either uh, a retaliation for her successful prosecution of Epstein or concern that her successes in this regard would continue to unpack somewhat unflattering information uh, about the relationship between U.S. Virgin Islands officials and Epstein himself? Look, um, we don't know the full picture. Here's what we do know. Uh, on New Year's Eve last year, Governor Bryan kind of unceremoniously surpri surprised everyone by firing Denise George. She had really aggressively led the, the investigation and prosecution of Epstein-related cases, you know, uh, investigating and prosecuting his estate, going after some of these other actors, uh, filing that lawsuit against J.P. Morgan that's now unfolding in, in federal court. And suddenly, Governor Bryan fires her. I mean, and you, you look at the press around that time, some of the social media chatter in the Virgin Islands and here in the U.S., in, in the mainland U.S., you, you see uh, a lot of suspicion that this was related to her aggressive drive on Epstein-related mm -hmm. cases. And uh, now we see this deposition taken uh, last month and reported uh, for the first time uh, yesterday uh, that she faced... Uh, a very unusual pressure uh, campaign from Governor Bryan to, to give leeway to Epstein um, in 2019. And so th it's clear that there was some sort of tension around how much influence Epstein had over this governor. And in, in fact, uh, because of her lawsuit filed against J.P. Morgan and J.P. Morgan's counterclaims, uh, we, we're seeing more and more disclosures around how much uh, power Epstein had over this governor who fired her. Um, you, you see emails now coming out in the litigation uh, with Cecil de Young, the former lobbyist for Epstein, uh, connecting uh, the pair, uh, offering Epstein ways to influence the governor, 
uh, basically forwarding on messages from him saying that he wants more money for his various charity causes or you know more money for his uh, political party. Um, there was a, a close tie here that perhaps the governor did not want to disclose, and he knew that this type of litigation and investigative drive uh, from Denise George would have revealed his own mm. connections uh, to this convicted, convicted sex offender. Mm, incredible. Uh, Lee, thank you so much for staying on top of this. Uh, we look forward to talking with it, you, talking about it with you more in the future. Thanks for having me.